Okay, Assalamualaikum and very good day to all of you. So today we're going to continue with lecture four, which is uh, rock forming minerals. So for today's uh, class, uh, we're going to address CO2, the cause outcome number two, which is to describe the main type of rocks, minerals and fossils and how they are formed. And uh, by the end of this lecture, uh, we expect you to be able to understand the basic principle of mineral as rock constituent. Number two, identifications of mineral through their habits or physical characteristics. And number three, <clears throat> the important and usefulness of mineral. So all this learning outcome will address the CO2, which is uh, to describe, you will be able to describe the main type of rock, mineral and fossil and so on. So uh, we're going to be recalling about the compositions of the Earth's interior that we have learned last time. So the Earth made up of three layers. We know about it, uh, the crust, thickness around five to 70 kilometer. We have mantle, uh, less than 2,900 kilometer, and we have core at 2,900 kilometer. And the crust is the outermost uh, layer of the Earth. Uh, is the, thi the, the, the thinnest layer ranging in thickness from uh, these kilometers. So the crust is made up of two types of rock, the oceanics and also the crustal. Uh, the, the oceanic crust is made up of uh, basalt mostly, while continental crust is made up of uh, granite. So the most abundant element in the crust are silicon and also oxygen. So these two elements make up about uh, 90% of the crust. So other abundant elements include magnesium, iron, and aluminum also uh, existed. And then we move into the deeper part, mantle. So mantle uh, is the layer of the earth that lies below the crust. It is the thickest layer ranging in thickness uh, around 2900 to uh, 5. 570 kilometers, 500, uh, 700 kilometers, something like that. So the mantle is made up of uh, solid rock. Okay, the most abundant element in the mantle are magnesium, oxygen, and also uh, silicon. Other abundant uh, elements include iron, uh, nickel, and also uh, calcium. And lastly, we have core. So the core is the innermost layer of the earth. So it is divided into two parts, the inner core and also the outer core. So the inner core is uh, much more solid, while the, the, the outer core is liquid. So the core is made up of iron and nickel, and the inner core is made up of solid iron, while the outer core is made up of liquid iron and, and, and nickel as well. So the Earth is a, a complex planet uh, with a unique composition. So the three layers of the Earth, the crust, the mantle, and the core, each have their own uniqueness in terms of the compositions and also the properties. So this layer work together to create the planet that we live on today. So there are three main types of rocks, namely uh, igneous, uh, metamorphic rocks, and also uh, sedimentary rocks. So we go into the igneous rock first. So igneous rocks are formed when molten rock or magma or lava, lava cools and uh, solidifies. So magma can be found deep within the earth or it can be erupted onto the surface as lava. So when magma, magma cools slowly underground, it forms large crystal. And this resulting um, a, a rock called uh, intrusive uh, igneous rock. So igneous, uh, intrusive igneous type of rocks is when the magma is cooling deep in the subsurface. However, when the magma uh, cool quickly on the uh, surface, when they erupted, okay, when a volcano happened, lava uh, flow on the land, it's formed small crystal, and the resulting rock is called an extrusive igneous rock. So again, for igneous rock, we have two types. One is intrusive, the one that been cooling down on the uh, in the subsurface, and another one is extrusive, which is uh, erupted on the on the land and solidified, cool, crystallized on the land. Now we move into uh, sedimentary rocks. So sedimentary rocks are formed when the accumulation of sediment. So sediments are a bit and pieces of rocks, mineral or organic matter that are transported 
by uh, either wind, water or uh, even ice, glacier for example. So when uh, sediments are deposited in layer, they can be compacted and cemented together to form a sedimentary rocks. So this one will be covered during your sedimentary class later. And now we have uh, the third type of rock known as metamorphic rocks. So metamorphic rocks are formed when existing rocks are changed by heat, pressure or chemical fluid. So the original rock can be either igneous, sedimentary rocks or even metamorphic rocks itself. So when any type of rock has been cooled or been exposed to heat, high temperature or maybe pressure, they will change it to metamorphic rock. So metamorphic rock can have wide variety of texture and compositions depending on uh, the conditions under which they were formed. So this is the rock cycle. It's a model that describes the way the rock is formed, changed and destroyed on the earth. So it's just like a hydrology cycle or we call it as water cycle. So if you start with magma, it can be started in, in uh, many stages or either stages. We start with magma first. So when the magma uh, is cooled down, it forms igneous rocks and weathering erosions happen. It will produce pieces of sediments that's been transported and deposited. It will produce uh, and then compacted it will produce uh, sedimentary rocks and these sedimentary rocks, however, exposed, uh, exposed uh, towards the uh, heat source like magma and then it turns into metamorphic rocks. So these metamorphic rocks uh, will have some contact with magma and then it produces uh, the igneous rock again. So this is how the rock cycle. We will cover these rock cycles on the next lecture. So in general, rock cycle is a continuous process. Rock can be transformed from one type to another through a process of melting, um, weathering, erosion, depositions, compactions. So the, the rock cycle is a dynamic process that has been shaping uh, the Earth for uh, billions of years. So it's responsible for the formations of the rock on Earth and is constantly uh, changing the Earth's surface. So unlike um, uh, water cycles, that takes only a few days, few hours to, to have a complete rotation. However, for rock cycle, it requires quite a long uh, number of times, ataupun quite a long number of years, about million years for them to complete or to go, to go with this uh, recycling uh, things. So now we move into um, a, a famous term that been used to describe the type of rocks which is rock forming minerals. So rock forming minerals are minerals that are commonly found in the earth crust and are responsible for the formation of various types of rock, such as uh, we have feldspar, you have quartz, amphibole, micas, olivine, garnet, calcite, and uh, also pyroxene. So these are minerals that are commonly found in the earth crust and they, they, they form various types uh, of rocks. So depends on the percentage, uh, the numbers, uh, the, the the physical properties and com chemical compositions that create this uh, mineral, it will create uh, the type of uh, rocks. And we have to come uh, to 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 ask a question uh, about the mineral. For example, what is minerals? So a mineral is a naturally occurring solid crystalline um, substance with a specific chemical compositions. So the following are the four essential uh, characteristics of mineral. One is naturally occurring. Second, um, solid, must be solid state. And third is uh, crystalline. And lastly, we have a specific chemical composition. So they need to obey the characteristic so that for them to have, uh, to, to be called as a mineral. We go with one, natural occurring. So mineral are formed need to be formed by natural process, not human interventions or uh, handmade. Second, need to be solid. So mineral are a solid uh, substance and not in liquid phase or uh, gaseous phase. A third must be uh, crystalline. So crystalline meaning, meaning that 
mineral have a regular or repeating uh, atomic uh, structure that give them a characteristic shape. So this one also will be described in the physical properties of the mineral. And lastly, you need to have a specific chemical compositions. Mineral have uh, a definite chemical compositions, uh, which can be expressed by a chemical formula. So there are over 5,000 known minerals that can be classified into several types. Uh, ataupun different type based on their chemical composition and crystal structure. Some of the most common type of mineral include, uh, for example, uh, silicate, so uh, oxides, carbonate, halides, and uh, and many more. So silicate, silicate are mostly uh, abundant type of mineral on Earth. They are made up of silicon and oxygen. Silicon, oxygen, silicate, and they often contain um, elements such as uh, aluminium, uh, iron and magnesium. So that is will that will uh, change uh, the chemical compositions and create new form of minerals. And then we also have uh, oxides. So oxides are minerals that contain uh, oxygen and, uh, and other elements. So some common, uh, so, sorry, some common uh, oxides include uh, magnetite, uh, Fe2O3. So hematite, Fe2O3 and also copper oxide. So this is kind of common, uh, common minerals that always associated with another uh, chemical or uh, another uh, mineral to form a new type of mineral. And secondly, we have, uh, third, sorry, thirdly, we have carbonate. So carbonates are minerals that contain uh, carbon, uh, oxygen and uh, another elements. Some common carbonates include uh, calcite, uh, Ca, CO3, cal uh, calcium carbonate. And we also have dolomite, magnesium carbonate, or MgCO3, or, or siderite uh, carbonate that contain ferrum, uh, FeCO3. And then we have uh, number four, we have halides. So halide uh, are minerals that contain uh, halogen uh, minerals, for example, sorry, uh, uh, halogen uh, atom uh, like fluorine, uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and also iodine and another element associated with another element. So some common halides or salt, uh, in general, we call it a salt, uh, include halide, okay, sodium fluoride, uh, fluoride, calcium uh, fluoride too. And then we have calcite, K, 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 C, KCL, which is potassium uh, chloride. So the study of mineral is uh, called mineralogy. So, and those who study mineralogy, we call it as mineralogists. So mineralogists study the physical, chemical, and structural properties of minerals. So they also uh, study how minerals are actually formed and uh, how they, uh, they they are benefits to to human. So some common minerals um, includes uh, halides, uh, pyrites, uh, known as pool gold, uh, diamond, gold, uh, cassiterites, ataupun the tin uh, tin tin ore. In Malaysia, we quite common with this uh, tin ore. We have sapphire, ru ruby, uh, emerald, calcite, and, and, and quartz. And some of them has uh, economic value and many purpose, uh, such as for construction. Okay, minerals such as sand, gravel, and cement are used to uh, build roads, building, and other structure. Jewelry, minerals such as uh, diamond, uh, rubies, gold, emeralds uh, used uh, to make jewelry and uh, we also uh, utilize the mineral for electronics uh, minerals such as silicon and copper used to make uh, electronic devices okay silicon for the insulator while copper is for the uh, the, the wiring and uh, industry applications uh, minerals such as iron ore uh, and bauxite uh, used to make a variety of industry products such as uh, steels and aluminium for 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 uh, construction and so on. So some uh, some substances uh, minerals are uh, often mistaken for mineral that are not actually a uh, mineral. So this include uh, glass. So glass is not mineral because uh, it's not crystalline. So glass is an uh, amorphous uh, amorphous solid, meaning it does not have a crystalline structure and it's actually human made. And we also have coal. Coal is uh, a bit organic, okay, or it's an organic compound and not uh, an, inorga not an inorganic minerals. We have also a uh, cubic uh, zirconia. So cubic zirconia is a synthetic germ, meaning that human-made germ that is not naturally uh, occurring, just like glass. 
And we also have water. So water is definitely not a type of mineral uh, because uh, it's a liquid form and not solid. Uh, water mineral is different thing, uh, water that contain mineral. So we are talking about the mineral itself. So um, the chemical compositions of mineral is determined by the elements that make it up. So the most common element in minerals uh, are oxygen, uh, silicon, aluminium, iron, calcium, magnesium, sodium, and also uh, potassium. So this element can combine in different ways to form a variety of uh, mineral. For example, quartz. Okay, so quartz is a mineral that is made up of silicon and uh, oxygen atoms to create a silicate. So this silicon atom are arranged in a tetrahedral uh, structure. Uh, which each silicon atom uh, bonded to four oxygen uh, atom. So this arrangement of atom give a quartz a characteristic hardness and ability to form crystal. So the arrangement of atoms in a mineral uh, crystal structure determines the mineral physical properties. For example, the hardness of mineral in, 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 is determined by the strength of the bonds between the atoms uh, in the crystal structure. So mineral with a strong bo bones, uh, sorry, strong bonds are uh, harder than mineral with weak bond. So the color of mineral is also determined by the arrangement of atom uh, in the crystal structure. Mineral that contain uh, certain elements such as iron will be often uh, be a certain color. For example, hematite mineral that contain iron is typically red in, in, in color. So the chemical compositions and arrangement of atom in mineral influence its physical uh, properties. So the different uh, elements that make up minerals uh, and the way these elements are arranged in the crystal structure determines uh, the mineral hardness, uh, color and physical uh, properties. So uh, in geology, uh, a polymorph is a mineral that uh, with the same chemical formula, uh, compositions, but has a uh, different crystal uh, structure. This means uh, the atom in the mineral are arranged in different way, which give the mineral different properties, even though they have the same compositions. So two common examples of polymorph is um, both graphite and also uh, diamond. So both graphite and diamond are made up of 100% carbon atom, but they are very different properties which graphite is soft and slippery while diamond is the hardest natural substances. So uh, graphite is a soft black mineral that is used in pencil and uh, lubricant. So it is made up of layer of carbon um, carbon uh, carbon atom that are arranged in hexagonal uh, pattern. Uh, the layer are held together by weak forces which allow them to uh, slide past each other easily. So this is why graphite is so soft and slippery. So graphite is also good conductor for electricity. So this is because the electron in the carbon atoms are free to move around. So graphite is used in, uh, in batteries to store the current and other electrical devices. Okay, unlike, unlike, uh, unlike diamond. So diamond is totally kind of 180 degrees different uh, with the graphite where diamond is the hardest natural substances. So it is made up of carbon atoms similar that are arranged in the tetrahedral pattern. This now is hexagonal pattern. It's in 2D. It's kind of sheet, while tetrahedral pattern is in 3D. So the tetrahedral uh, structure is very strong and rigid, um, which makes the diamond so hard. So the diamond is also a good conductor of heat. So this is because the carbon atom are bonded together very tightly. So diamond is used in jewelry and uh, industrial applications and uh, also for the drilling bit. And graphite and diamond are two examples of uh, common polymorph. So these have the same chemical formula, which is the carbon, but they have different crystal uh, structure. So this give them different properties. So graphite is soft and slippery, which diamond is hard and conduct heat very well. So if you want to know the, the reason at, at upon, uh, to know the difference between the diamond and graphite in terms of their physical properties, 
Okay, uh, instead having the same uh, chemical compositions, please watch this uh, video. I will provide it together with um, uh, in, in, in the ULEN letter. So now we're going to talk about uh, mineral physical properties. So we're going to uh, explain or discuss in terms of physical properties and also chemical properties in this lecture. Now we take a look on the physical properties first. So physical properties of mineral. Uh, these properties can be used to identify and classify minerals and they can also provide clues about the conditions under which mineral are formed. So this include uh, crystal form, uh, the crystal system. And secondly, we have cleavage, thirdly we have hardness, and then we have density, luster, color, and streak. So these are the seven, uh, sorry, six, uh, six, seven, uh, color and streak can be uh, different things. Uh, seven uh, mineral properties uh, when you want to classify uh, the, the mineral physically. So we will investigate the property of minerals one by one in the next slide, okay? So we take a look on the first uh, physical properties that we go to classify, which is the crystal form system. So the crystal crystal form of mineral is uh, an overall, uh, overall shape. So crystals are formed when atoms or molecules arrange themselves in regular repeating pattern. So these different ways in which atoms or molecules can be arranged give rises to different uh, crystal system. In general, there are two types of uh, operation system uh, in the crystal form that we can describe further, which is uh, symmetry or operations and crystallographic system. So a symmetry of a crystal is determined by the number and type of symmetry operation that can be applied to it. So a symmetry I mean, a symmetry operation is a transformation that leaves the crystal in identical configurations. So this, the, this, this symmetry operation has three types of uh, symmetry operations known as uh, plane of symmetry, axis of symmetry, center of symmetry. Okay. Plane of symmetry divides the crystal into two uh, mirror image into halves. And it excess of symmetry rotate the crystals around a central point, while for the central symmetry, the point within a crystal that are related to each other by by by, by inversion. So for the crystal the crystallographic system, we have uh, seven, which are based on the unit cell. So the smallest repeating unit of crystal, and uh, the crystallographic system. Uh, consists of uh, isometric, tetragonal, hexagonal, trigonal, orthorhombic, monoclinic, and triclinic. So these are the example of uh, the minerals that has these characteristics uh, for the crystallographic system. So this uh, crystal uh, crystallographic system are distinguished based on the length of the unit cell ages and the angle uh, between them. We're going to look into this uh, one by one later on. But we go with the symmetry operation first. So we have three, we have plane of symmetry, we have axis of symmetry and center uh, of symmetry. <clears throat> so the symmetry of um, mineral uh, crystal re uh, refers to the number of ways in which crystal can be divided into identical part by plane or axis or center of symmetry. Symmetry operation are movement or, or operation that can be performed on a crystal to produce an identical of the crystal. Here we take a look at on the uh, plane uh, symmetry. For example, we have this kind of uh, minerals. So we need to identify which plane at the point, uh, which uh, area, which line that we can divide and make it into half. Uh, as explained before, plane of symmetry where we can divide and the, uh, the, the mirrors into half, huh? if you can read here. So I, I'm giving you a, a lemon term. So if we take a look from the uh, top view, we can have a kind of symmetry uh, structure or symmetry patterns. So we can divide it into half by using this blue, blue line, blue line over here as well. So this is what we call as plane symmetry, meaning that they, when we divide, we can have two uh, 
uh, two half okay macam pinang di belah dua something like that lah okay and then uh, we also have uh, axis of uh, symmetry so axis of uh, symmetry is an imaginary line drawn through the center of crystal that replicates the exact shape if the crystal is turned to 360 meaning that it's a imaginary line where we can rotate it so when we rotate it we still uh, we, we can have almost similar uh, uh, things at the pattern when we rotate it uh, in 360 actually we have uh, some uh, class classification for the axis uh, symmetry but this one i believe will be covered in the next uh, course which is mineralogy however we take a look at this example uh. so this mineral uh, this shape of mineral actually has three axis of symmetry where they can be rotated uh, at A axis, B axis, and also C axis. So when we rotate this uh, 360, we will get the same uh, faces. <clears throat> However, um, for the A and B axis, we, we just need to rotate about 106, 180 in order to get exactly the same face. I mean the same uh, configuration or geometry of the diamond, sorry, the, the, the minerals. And we also do have um, a center of uh, symmetry. So center of uh, symmetry, uh, so is, let's say if an imaginary line can be extended from any point on the surface through its center, and a similar point is represented along the line uh, equidistance from the center. So let's say we have a, uh, from this point to this point is actually equivalent from this point to this point. And when you connect all this uh, equidistant, meaning that you have the same length from edge to edge, you will have a center. So the center of uh, symmetry, the center of gravity for this uh, mineral is actually at this C point where everything is crossing each other. So this is my uh, mean by center of symmetry. For example, uh, this uh center of symmetry is the cross uh, the, the the crossing line of intercept intercept uh, point of a b and c so this is the punya center of symmetry so now uh we move into uh crystal crystallographic system so uh, we have two again uh, for the crystal form system. One is uh, symmetry operations and another one is crystallographic system. So these are the type of crystallographic system which comprises uh, various bonding uh, lengths and degree of bonding. So these are the list that I mentioned earlier. We have seven at least. Uh, we take a look on the cubic. So cubic has both identical bonding length with a uh, high and also degree 90 degree at each edge or angle so triple a like we said okay we have a identical length width and also uh, high so while tetragon tetragonal tetragonal has a square area a and a however different in high so if all the edges is different in length okay it will produce a b c uh, that you will call uh, orthorhombics. So let's say you have two, three, and four. This is you have three, three, three. This is three, three, four. So if you have two, three, four, that this is ortho, orthorhombic. Now we move into various degree. So asymmetric, asymmetric, ataupun kita panggil cubic, tetragonal, orthorhombic in terms of the degree are uh, uh, similar, 90 degree. Now we take a look if uh, the mineral has a different in terms of degree. So we go with trigonal first, uh, basic one. Trigonal is similar like uh, isometric uh, cubic, has different uh, length, width, and also uh, height. However, they have a difference ataupun similar degree at each edge. For example, uh, for, for this uh, height, sorry, width and also length, it has, uh, let's say this is uh, 75 degrees for this 
part also uh, 75 degrees, this one also 75 degrees. So this one we call it as uh, trigonal. It's not 90 degrees. Instead having another degree of bonding. And now we move into uh, hexagonal. So hexagonal character is like uh, tetragonal. Okay, A, A, C. Sama juga A, A and C. But what different? The degree. So for this case, Y, Y on the on the on the area is uh, 122 degree okay and over here 122 degrees so in total you need to know lah maybe we have 60 degree over here and 60 degree uh, over here so hexagonal like a tetragonal but difference in term of uh, the degree on the area so we move into monoclinic so monoclinic just like autorhombic Okay, sama characteristic. They have length and width and also height, totally different. You have two, two, sorry, two, three and four, cm for example. Okay, for the length and the width, it has 90 degree. And surface is also 90 degree, sorry, sorry. For the height and the width is 90 degree. However, what makes it different is the length at the point the degree at this H where it has beta beta degree only one degree uh, different which is between width and also height okay the rest similar okay uh, <clears throat> uh, width and also uh, length 90 degree uh, length and width is also uh, 90 degree 90 degree and lastly we have a uh, triclinics so triclinic is like autorhombic uh, and monoclinic. Instead, uh, every corner has various various degree. This one maybe um, uh, seventy five degrees. Uh, this one is forty five degrees. This one is another fifty degrees. Uh, so it has different. So so uh, almost uh, similar like autorhombic, but different at each corner uh, in terms of the degree, length and height. So sigma degree between V and uh, length. So let me say an example, okay, uh, of mineral physical properties. Uh, I have two example here. So diamond, okay, it has cubic, cubic type of uh, arrangement of minerals. So diamond are hardest natural substance known uh, with a Mohs circle. Eh? I think we will learn about the Mohs circle. Uh, Mohs circle hardness of tens, the highest. So this means that they can scratch any other minerals but they can only be scratched by other diamonds. So they can only getting scratched by themselves. So this make them ideal for use of cutting tools and uh, abrasive. Uh, besides jewelry, they are also being used uh, as a cutting tool, eh? like drilling big for oil and gas drilling operations. So diamonds are also excellent in electric uh, insulator. This make them uh, ideal for use in electrical uh, application such as uh, in electronic component and industrial applications such as an electric electrical contact something like that so the first step in diamond formation is the formation of a uh, carbon rich rock such as kimberlite and uh, lamproite so this carbon rich uh, rock undergone a uh, very high pressure around 1300 degrees celsius and also temperature about uh, 60000 uh, atmosphere for million years of exposure and diamond have a tetrahedral crustal structure. This means that the carbon atom are arranged in a tetrahedral pattern, like we discussed before, with each carbon atom bonded to four other carbon carbon atom. Okay, the 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 third sorry the fourth uh, bond uh, bonding is uh, in the vertical way. So the tetrahedral structure is what gives diamond their hardness and the ability to reflect lights. So the cubic crystal structure is more general term that refer to any crystal structure that has cubic uh, unit cells. So the, uh, the, the the cubic crystal structure is more common that, that, than the tetrahedral crystal structure. Now we take a look at uh, on the cassiterite, which is sternum oxide. Uh, it's a common uh, mineral for tin, tin ore. So when we find a cassiterite, meaning that we, then we have a, a plenty at the point abundance of cassiterites along the main range, especially on the western side. Okay, again, cassiterite is a thin uh, oxide minerals. 
with the chemical composition of uh, sternum uh, oxide and uh, is the primary of, of, of tin and is uh, used in production of tin metal, uh, tin alloys and tin chemicals. So Cassetra is found in a variety geological uh, setting, including uh, hydrothermal vein, uh, pegmatite, and placer deposit. This one uh, later uh, we will discuss yeah, in geomorphology. It is a relatively common mineral and is mined in many countries around the world, including Indonesia and also, uh, sorry, in Indonesia and uh, Malaysia. So the hardness of cassiterite is around six to seven later. We will discuss this. This means that it can be scratched by uh, the knife, but it cannot be scratched by a steel file. So the, the, the specific gravity of scatterite is around 7 to 1 to 7, 7 point, 7, sorry, 7 7.1 to 7.3. It's considered quite heavy. This means that it's a slightly denser uh, than water. So the streak of scatterite is white. This means that when scatterite is rubbed against a streak plate, it leaves a white, uh, white, white kind of mark. So scatterite is, again, non-magnetic even though they are kind of metal so this means that it's not attractive to to to, magnet, uh, to any magnet and then uh, the second physical properties after uh, crystal form or crystal system is cleavage okay so cleavage is the tendency of rocks to split uh, a long plane of weakness Okay, this plane of weakness are often caused by alignment of mineral grain in the rocks. Okay, cleavage can be used to split into a thin layer of sheet, which can be used for variety purposes, such as uh, making uh, roofing tiles or paving uh, stones. So the tetrahedral layers of uh, mica, we take a look as an example. Uh, this is a uh, kind of mica we call as Moscovite. Okay, but Later, we will discuss on, uh, on the Moscovite thing. Let's take a, a big example of mica. Uh, the tetrahedral layers of mica and aluminium hydroxide sheets are the basic uh, building block of mica minerals. Huh? So the, they, they, they are made up of alternating uh, layer of silicon uh, tetrahedral and aluminium hydroxide uh, octahedral. So the silicon tetrahedral uh, share their oxygen atom with uh, each other uh, and forming a sheet of uh, linked tetrahedra. Uh, the alumina hydroxide at octahedra uh, share their oxygen atom with the silicon tetrahedra with uh, each other, okay, forming a sheet of linked octahedra. Uh, never mind, this one we will learn later lah, in the mineralogy. I just give you an uh, overview. So these are two sheets uh, stacked on top of each other with uh, silicon tetrahedra of one sheet bonded to another uh, aluminum hydroxide uh, octahedra of other sheet. So this aluminum hydroxide sheet uh, uh, has a, a bonding on top and at the bottom of this uh, tetrahedra and uh, layers of silicon. So the tetrahedral layer of mica and aluminum hydroxide sheets are also responsible for the properties of mica and minerals. Okay, the silicon tetrahedral are negatively charged, while the aluminum uh, hydroxide octahedra are positively charged. So this uh, expression gives mica minerals, uh, minerals the ability to cleave easily along the plane between between this sheet. Okay. So these sheets are also able to slide past each other, which give mica minerals the flexibility and the ability to split uh, into a thin layer of sheet. So now we take a look on the uh, type of cleavage. Eh? So type of cleavage and example. Okay, for example, we have uh, we have many actually, yeah. uh, for example here, many number of cleavage. This is an example. Huh? We have cleavage in one direction, cleavage in two directions, cleavage in three directions, and also cleavage in uh, two directions, but different, different angle. We take a look on the first example, Moscovite, the, the cleavage in one direction. So Moscovite has one perfect cleavage in the basal plane. Uh, this means that it can uh, be easily split into thin sheet. Felspar. Felspar has two perfect cleavage at right angle to each other. 
Okay, this means that it can be easily split into thin, thin plate. Okay, plate on this region because it has uh, two edges like this. So it can be split on this way and also this way. So we also have cleavage in three direction. For example, uh, halide. Uh, because halide has a three perfect cleavage at right angle to each other. This means that it can be easily split into cubic. Okay, this one, this one into uh, one layer, but different directions and, and two directions, sorry, two directions. This one, you can uh, split them into three directions and produce another uh, cube. Calcite has another three uh, perfect cleavage. They are not right angle to each other. Okay, they are not right angle to each other. They also can be split into uh, rhombohedrons. Meaning that uh, similar like uh, halide, but uh, different shapes, a uh, rhombohedron uh, shape. And these are uh, another example of number cle uh, cleavage directions. And there's cache, uh, illustrations, and uh, this is the, the drill minerals, right? So quite common uh, we, for, for the Moscovite or biotite, to, to have uh, cleavage directions of uh, only one. Two at 90 degree, meaning that uh, at 90 degree that we can uh, break, uh, break them. So cleavage is uh, more on uh, the way, ataupun how many numbers, uh, ataupun uh, numbers of uh, cleavage that we can break them. So we can break uh, at this and also uh, at this. So that's why uh, two cleavage, at 90 degree. We can uh, break them uh, at this uh, line. We also can break them at this line. Two, but not 90 degrees. For example, halide that we discussed earlier. Okay, uh, not 90 degrees. Uh, halide, we have three at 90 degrees, more to cubic. <clears throat> uh, cubic, uh, sorry, this one is calcite and this one is uh, high, uh, highlight. We can break them uh, to form another cubic, cube, small cube. Three, not 90 uh, degree. Okay, for example, this kind of uh, minerals, and we also have four the te te tetrahedral uh, kind of shape. Okay, we can split them in in four uh, directions. So now after we have a uh, crystal form or system and then we take it on the uh, cleavage which uh, which is the breakable uh, pattern uh, of the um, of the minerals we have the third physical properties known as hardness so hardness is quite common okay because it's easy to measure so hardness is a measure of mineral resistant uh, to scratching so basically, so it is influenced by uh, the kind of bonding between atoms within the mineral. Very hard mineral like diamond, corundum, uh, sapphire, topaz. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Sorry. So. Uh, <clears throat> So very uh, hard mineral like diamond, corundum, uh, sapphires, uh, topaz, or gemstones or precious stones uh, is uh, quite quite common because they are tough, beautiful, and also lasting. And how is uh, hardness is measured? So the most scales uh, is a qualitative or uh, ordinal scale from one to ten, okay, ranging from uh, talc, gypsum, uh, calcite, chloride, apatite, orthoglass quartz, uh, topaz, corundum, and lastly, diamond. So it's measured the resistance of mineral through the ability of harder materials to scratch softer material. So the scale is named for its creator, uh, the Germany uh, geologist and mineralogist, uh, Frederick uh, Moss. So uh, the Moss uh, hardness scale is based on the ability of one natural sample you know, to scratch uh, another mineral visibly. So the sample of metal used by most uh, more, uh, all different minerals. So mineral chemically pure or solid found in the nature and rocks are made up of one or more minerals. So more hardness scale is a simple and easy way to compare the hardness of mineral. So it's also uh, a useful tool for identifying uh, mineral in the field. 
so the more uh, hardness scales, uh, like like I mentioned earlier, from diamond until top, meaning that as the the more scale is increasing, the harder uh, the the minerals. So diamonds it cannot be uh, scratched with other type of mineral except for themselves. Corundum only can be can be what uh, scratched by diamond topaz can be scratched by corundum and di diamonds and so on. Let's take a look at a uh, common object. So fingernails, our fingernails considered 2.5 where we can scratch gypsum but not calcite. Copper penny, okay, copper penny is about uh, 3.5. So do, you can scratch calcites using uh, your penny or you, maybe you can scratch the fingernails using the shilling. Chloride, uh, we have a wire nail 4.5, knife blade. Okay, knife blade can scratch fluoride, calcite, gypsum, uh, uh, and, and talks. <clears throat> so we can use knife, uh, knife blade, especially if you want to um, to, to differentiate between uh, calcite vein and quartz vein. When you scratch the calcite vein, the knife blade will, uh, the, the calcite will be scratched. However, if you're using a knife blade, to uh, scratch quartz, uh, the, 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 there will be no scratch appears on the quartz because quartz has higher, more scale compared to the uh, knife blade glass. We have 5.5 and uh, strict, strict plate uh, 6.5. So based on this, please memorize this, huh? the, the more scale in terms of uh, the absolute hardness uh, volume almost uh, A, almost 90% of the hardness value. So uh, number four of, of, for the physical uh, properties is uh, density. So density, sorry. So density is a kind of straightforward measurement. Everyone knows what density is, but we can classify the physical uh, properties or uh, we can measure the physical properties of mineral based on the density. So we know that density mass per unit volume, GCM uh, cubic centimeter, increases with atomic packing and the atomic weight of the elements in the mineral. So this is the type of uh, minerals uh, that has uh, different uh, uh, density value, for example, quartz. Quartz is uh, roughly 2.65. Potassium feldspar has lower pragyl class mineral uh, has um, a little bit higher. Calcite is harder. Dolomite is even harder. Pyrite is stronger. And aside uh, is greater. Uh, but, but sorry, lower and element. So this uh, this mineral composition is a common uh, elements uh, found in uh, in as uh, dolomite, pyrite, and site and their density uh, classifications. <clears throat> Killing minerals like uh, colonites and timomorilonites is mostly has lower uh, density compared to uh, quartz and also uh, plagioclase feldspar or calcite even more. Okay. So uh, the fifth one is uh, last last day uh, engineer. This supposedly the correct one, yes, correct one. Luster. So the term used are generally not scientific. So luster is a physical properties of uh, minerals that describe how they reflect light. So it's often used to help identify uh, minerals as different minerals have uh, characteristic luster. And the most common term used to describe lusters are listed here, uh, adamantan, blah, 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 but I will only explain on the a few uh, last term that been uh, commonly used to describe uh, the physical. Okay, for example, adamantine. So adamantine, uh, this luster is like that of a diamond. So it is it is the most brilliant luster of all. Example of new that adamantine luster includes diamonds, corundum. Sometimes they call adamantine. I, I prefer to use uh, adamantine. Um, Diamond, corundum, and 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 spinel is a type of uh, we we call it as a gemic crystal uh, ataupun uh, the degree of adamantine to 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 show how the mineral is actually uh, reflected uh, towards light. 
And uh, dal is a cut quite common as well. So this luster is like uh, of unpolished stone. Okay, unpolished stone. It is the least common luster of minerals. For example, uh, dal luster include feldspar, uh, amphibole, uh, pyroxenes, and so on. And then we also need uh, metallic. Uh, metallic. This luster is like um, that is polished metal. Okay, much you think of. Uh, the cut car, uh, so on. So it's the most common luster of minerals. So example of mineral that uh, with uh, metallic luster includes uh, like pyrite or we known as fool's gold, uh, galena, uh, magnetite or hematite and so on. So we always uh, mention that uh, metallic uh, minerals to, to, to. So this is a kind of classification. So like you have a crystal type of mineral, you say that adamantine, uh, with, uh, luster minerals. Uh, dull, for example, plagioclase class uh, mineral. Uh, metallic, uh, like uh, pyrites. Uh, this is pyrite, calco, calco pyrite, and, 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 and so on. Uh, what else, yeah? Uh, greasy. Greasy. Yeah, so greasy, this luster is like of grease, okay, oily. Uh, or slimy. So example of mineral with greasy luster includes uh, like uh, talc, uh, TALC, or like, yeah? uh, steatite, or even chloride. Okay, chloride will sometimes be the a greasy type of uh, minerals. We also have resinous. Uh, this luster is like uh, that is resin, resin. Okay, this is often uh, described as being uh, oily and waxy as well. So example of mineral with uh, resinous luster includes uh, amber, uh, copal, and, 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 and succinite. So this looks like a resin. Okay, a bit like um, resin. Lah, okay, a resin. Okay, and then we also have silky. Uh, look like silk, uh, like fibrous, uh, more compact. Uh, for example, uh, chrysotolite, uh, tremolite and asbestos okay we, we call it as uh, silky and we also have sub uh, sub metallic so this luster like the tarnished metal so it's less common than metallic luster example of mineral with uh, sub metallic luster include um, calcopyrite and also uh, bornite and we also have pearly is quite common as well uh, example of mineral uh, is aragonite nickel and also uh, opal uh, lagi? Uh, vitreous. Vitreous also uh, quite common. Example of mineral uh, like quartz, calcite, and uh, fluorides, where uh, it means they look a, a little bit glassy, uh, like glass, but it's the second most common luster of minerals. Okay, almost like 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 glassy. So it's important to note that the luster of mineral can be uh, vary depending on its crustal structure, so surface structure and the angle which like hits uh, heat. For example, a mineral with a vitreous luster may appear dull uh, if it's a fracture or rough surface, so it depends. Again, luster is meaning that the reflectivity uh, of the minerals and we describe them based on uh, the, 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 the presentations. However, it also depends on the uh, surface structure. So let's say if you have a uh, quartz, we call it as vitreous, clear, clear cut of uh, quartz can be appear vitreous or glassy. However, uh, it can appear to have dull if, if it has a fracture or scratch on its surface where the lights cannot be uh, reflected well like it reflected on the original uh, quartz surface. So because of that, we, uh, we 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 can uh, differentiate into uh, different uh, ataupun classify into different cluster. And now we move into the color of mineral. So the color of mineral is one of its most noticeable uh, properties, but is is not always a reliable characteristic for identification. Some mineral may have distinctive uh, distinctive colors, which other can um, occur in various. Uh, color due to impurities or other factors. For example, malachite. Malachite is a copper carbonate mineral. 
that is typically in greyish green color. However, um, it can also be found in other colors such as black, brown, and yellow. So this is because of color of malachites can be affected by the amount of copper presence in the mineral as well as the presence of other impurities. So similarly, galena is a lead sulfide mineral that is typically a lead, a lead gray color. However, it can also be found in other color. Okay, common one is gray color, but it can also be found in black, silver, and also yellow. So this is because of color of galena minerals can be affected by the amount of lead present in the minerals, as well as the presence of other impurities. Pyrite is an iron sulfide mineral that is um, typically um, silvery gold color. However, it can also be found in other colors such as black, brown, and green. So this is because color of pyrite can be affected by the presence of impurities such as uh, copper. In general, the color of mineral can be uh, a helpful clue for identification, but also but, but it should not be used alone. Other properties such as luster, streak, hardness, and density should be also considered. And here, some additional example of mineral that can be have a variety uh, colors of uh, rocks. For example, quartz. Quartz, quartz can be clear, can be white, gray, brown, yellow, even we have pink uh, quartz, and it also can be red or orange. And we also have calcite, uh, can be clear, white, white, white color. And if it, if it is a metal, oh, sorry, if it is uh, weathered, we can have a yellow, brown. And we also have pink quartz, calcite and also blue calcite. And people can be green, brown, black, or white based on the uh, presence of uh, uh ferron pyroxene can be green uh, brown black and white so if you are interested in learning about the physical properties of mineral they, they, there are many resources available online in uh, in, in library uh, to, to to show you the variety of color uh, within the same uh, type of uh, minerals so now we move into streak streak and transparency really combined together uh. So the streak of mineral is the color of the powder produced when it's dragged across on uh, weathered surface, ataupun unweathered surface, sorry. So unlike the appearance of color of mineral, which for most mineral can be very considerably, the trail of fine ground uh, powder generally has more consistent characteristic color and thus an important diagnostic tool in mineral identification. Okay, identification of streak is much way better than identification of color. So you need to scratch and we, we, we can see the color produced ataupun the powder produced from the drag ataupun the rubbing. Okay, uh, regardless, for example, let's say quartz, we have, I said earlier, we have white, gray, brown, yellow, pink and, and whatsoever. However, when we do kind of scratching ataupun uh, dragging so on the unweighted surface, we're going to have the same color. Okay, probably white ataupun colorless. Okay, regardless the the punya appearance color. Okay, for example, <clears throat> uh, opimen will have a uh, golden yellow hematite. We have red brown. We have also black hematite. However, when we scratch, we will we'll get red brown. For side, we get yellow calcopyrite. Uh, we get black cinnabar. We get red molly molly uh, molly night. Molid the night, we will get green. So besides street and color, opacity of the minerals or transparency of the minerals is also part of physical description that can be made, ranging from high or opacity, uh, translucence, and also uh, transparent. Okay, it depends on the appearance of the minerals. Now we move into the chemical composition of the mineral. So we are done with the physical uh, characteristic. We have two asymmetrical system. Uh, we have actually seven and uh, many classification within this uh, seven. Now we move into chemical compositions of the minerals. So the chemical composition of a mineral is the specific combinations of elements that make up the minerals. So the chemical compositions of mineral is determined by its crystal structures, uh, the atoms, 
that are available in the environment where the, the, the mineral is formed. So the chemical compositions of the mineral can be expressed in a variety of ways, okay, including one, formula, second, percentage uh, compositions, and lastly, elemental uh, analysis. Formula, so the formula of a mineral uh, is a simplified representation of the chemical composition of mineral. For example, the formula of quad is silicate, SiO2, which means that quad is made up of silicon atom and another two type, uh, sorry, another two oxygen atom. Hematite is the, the, the main uh, iron ore, composed of ferrum two oxide, which means the iron ore is made up of two ferrum atom and three oxygen atom. So this is formula, mineral composition formula. The second one is percentage of composition. So the percentage composition of a mineral is the percentage of each element in the mineral. For example, quartz is 49, sorry, 46.67667 percent of silicon and 53.3333 uh, percent of oxygen. So this is the percentage of the minerals at the point element in the in the minerals. Uh, and then we have the third one, which is elemental analysis. Elemental analysis is more precise method of uh, determining the chemical composition of minerals. Uh, elemental analysis can be used to determine the exact amount of each element in the mineral. So there are some common chemical compositions found in mineral on Earth crystals, such as oxygen, silicon, uh, aluminium, iron, calcium, sodium, potassium, and magnesium. Now, oxygen has the highest percentage of atom found in mineral and it plays a major role in making up almost all minerals. So it depends on uh, different type of uh, metals uh, type of minerals that been associated uh, with oxygen, it will can create another type of uh, minerals. So the chemical composition of minerals can be used to identify the minerals and to determine its properties. And uh, here, uh, some example of chemical composition of common minerals. Huh? For example, we have quartz, SiO2. We have calcite, Ca, carbonate, CO3. We have magnetite, ferrum 3, oxide, which is the O is 4, hematite, Fe2O3. We have gold, iron, and silver, uh, argentum. So the chemical composition of mineral is complex and fascinating topic. And this topic will be covered further in the next semester course, which is mineralogy and uh, petrography. So let's take a look on uh, at silicates uh, minerals. <clears throat> Silicate mineral can be classified into two. Okay, basically, one is uh, mafic and another one is uh, felsic uh, silicate. So mafic uh, mafic silicate contains uh, darker minerals. So when we have a darker mineral, we call it as mafic silicate. Okay, uh, like FeMg and has higher density compared to felsic silicate, which like which is lighter in color, such as uh, calcium. Uh, potassium, uh, sodium, and it has a lower density compared to the uh, metric. Okay, for example, mineral like olivine, uh, it has a uh, silicate oxide that has been associated is either magnesium and ferrum. It's a color. The color is green and brown. Density is uh, a bit a bit uh, higher. Uh, pyroxenes uh, is a silicate minerals, but different amount of uh, Mg and Fe that creates even uh, slow, a bit lower than olivine, amphibole, biotype, quartz. Quartz is a type of uh, felsic silicate, okay, because it consists of totally uh, SiO2. Felspar, uh, silicate mineral that contain uh, aluminium, uh, sodium, and so potassium. Uh, Moscovite, uh, this is uh, a silicate mineral as well, but rich in terms of uh, calcium, aluminium, and also hydroxide, something like that, that creates uh, lighter in color uh, in terms of the uh, representations. So remember this mafic silicate and also felsic silicates in terms of uh, the, uh, the, the, the the presence of uh, other impurities at the point, uh, another minerals. So we're going to talk about density between uh, the mantle and also uh, the crust a little bit. So the earth crust and mantle are made up of different type of rocks, eh, which have different density. The mantle is made up of mafic rock. Okay, mafic rock meaning that uh, a darker type of rock, which are denser than classic rocks, which make up 
the class. So the class is mostly felsic rock. Okay, silicate, felsic rock. Okay, silicate, uh, aluminium, silicate, calcium, something like that. So this different intensity caused by the different abundance of mafic and felsic silicates in the two types of rocks. So mafic rocks are rich in uh, mafic silicate, such as olivine and pyroxene. Uh, so these minerals are denser than uh, felsic silicate, which are the main component of uh, felsic rocks. So felsic rocks are rich in felsic silicate, such as felspar and quartz. So these minerals are less dense than uh, mafic uh, silicate. So density different between mantle and crust is also due to the different pressure and temperature at which two types of rocks are actually found. So the mantle is under much higher pressure and temperature uh, then the crust, which causes the mafic mineral to pack more tightly together, making the mantle more denser. And in terms of oceanic and uh, continental crust, so the oceanic crust is thinner compared to the continental crust. This is because the, the oceanic crust is made up of mafic rocks, with the continental crust is made up of calcic rock. Uh, okay, sigma, ataupun uh, sigma, and also C, C A L. Uh, sorry, S I A L. So the oceanic crust is uh, also younger than the continental crust. So the oceanic crust is constantly being uh, created uh, at mid ocean ridge, destroyed at the subduction zone. So the continental crust, on the other hand, is much older and more stable. So the common mineral in uh, Earth crust um, are olivine, pyroxene, phosphor, and quartz, where olivine and pyroxene is the mafic type of silicate, while Vespa and quartz is uh, lighter or felsic type of silicate. However, the relative abundance of these minerals varies between the two type of rocks. For example, olivine and pyroxene are most abundant mineral in mafic rock, while Vespa and quartz are most abundant in uh, mineral in felsic rocks. So the different uh, abundance of these minerals are what give the two uh, the two type of rocks their different properties such as density and also strength. So that's why if you can see here, oceanic crust is always uh, subducted below the uh, the continental crust because of their density. Where the oceanic crust, the mafic uh, rock is uh, higher in terms of density compared to continental crust, then it will be subducted go under the continental. Crust. And so, all in all, minerals are naturally occurring, occurring solid crystalline substance that have specific chemical compositions. They are generally inorganic, meaning that they are not uh, made by living things. Rock forming minerals are important by classifying uh, different types of rocks. They are the minerals that make up uh, the majority of rock. Crystal form, like cleavage, hardness, density, and luster are the five common physical properties used to identify uh, rocks. So crystal form is the shape of mineral crystal. Some minerals have very irregular crystal form, while others have, uh, have more irregular shape. Cleavage. Cleavage is the ability of a mineral to break along smooth or flat surface. Okay, ability to break along. Some uh, like, like must provide only one side, uh, what highlights three side, uh, another cube will be uh, produced. So normally we will just uh, explain in terms of either uh, the, the, the mineral has good cleavage uh, and while others have uh, poor uh, cleavage. So hardness, hardness um, uh, is a measure of how difficult uh, the mineral to scratch. Uh, another minerals. Uh. Minerals are assigned a hardness uh, scale from 1 to 10. Uh, we stop uh, being the softest, which is 1, while diamond is the hardest, which is 10. And then we have uh, on the density is the mass of mineral per unit volume. So minerals have different density, which can be used to help identifying them. Luster, lastly, uh, is a way of mineral reflect light. Okay, like we have metallic, vitreous, or glassy, pearly, submetallic, and many more. So by using these physical properties, it is possible to identify most type of rocks. Okay, sometimes uh, we always use these classifications at the physical properties uh, naming uh, in order to describe the type of minerals. And after we do the description, we can identify at the point uh, tell what kind of rock is this. Normally, we go to the site, we found minerals, we cannot identify what type of mineral first, except you have uh, several experience. 
but for the first time, we will always try to teach you on how to describe the minerals. And after uh, more description on here, for, and then you explain to those uh, not going to the field, uh, they might have might be some idea what kind of mineral based on your physical properties description. So that is why the importance of Apani uh, has the ability to describe the mineral based on uh, the, the, the six uh, criteria uh, just now. So I think uh, that's all uh, for this lecture. And we hope that we will meet again next time physically for the topic of rock cycle. With that, uh, thank you for your attention and have a nice day ahead. Thank you.